Hey there. In this video, we are going to look at restrictions on variables in radical expressions. In other words, we're going to look at if there are any values that are non-permissible for those variables. So if we're going to look at radical expressions with variables in them, like any of the ones there, we need to think about the values of the variable that allow the expression to be defined. Or in other words, are there any non-permissible values? Are there any restrictions we need to think about on the values of the variable that'll make the expression undefined? So let's start with this one right here. Square root of x. The square root function is only defined for numbers that are zero or greater. So if this is an x under here, the values that we put under there have to be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, you can have square root of 10, you can have square root of 7, you can even have square root of 0, but you can't have square root of negative 3 or negative 7 or any number below 0 if we're talking about the real numbers, which is what we're assuming we're talking about here. So the restrictions on that expression are x has to be greater than 0. If you're saying what are the non-permissible values, the non-permissible values are all the values less than zero. Let's look at the second one here. This one says square root of x minus three. This thing underneath here needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And the values of the variable that make that happen, if you're gonna subtract three from them, well now x doesn't have to be greater than or equal to zero, x has to be greater than or equal to three. Right? If you put in numbers that are greater than or equal to 3 in there, like if you put 3, this is going to be 0. If you put 4, 4 minus 3, you get 1. If you put any number bigger, it's going to be a positive number. That's the restriction on that expression on that variable. For this one, maybe it's harder to see what the value of that variable is. So what we're going to do is we're going to just write a, an inequality that says that that thing underneath the radical sign, 7 minus 5x, has to be greater than or equal to 0. If you can't see what it is right away, you can write an inequality like that and solve that inequality. This says that 7 minus 5x has to be greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to solve this inequality by moving that to the other side and making it positive 5x. I'm going to keep the sign the same way and over here like this. And then if I divide both sides by 5, I get that x is less than or equal to 7 fifths, or 1.4 for using decimals. That's the restrictions on the variable in that expression. Now incidentally, if you were solving this by moving the 7 over, let's say you, let's say you moved the 7 over and you made it minus 5x is greater than or equal to negative 7 if you moved it over there, if you move that 7 over to the other side. If you have that and you divide both sides by negative 5, this is going to become x over here. This is going to become positive 7 fifths. But since you divide it by a negative here, you need to reverse that inequality sign. You get the same thing either way here. This says x is less than 7 fifths. This says x is less than 7 fifths. Important to know there. Let's look at that last one. Square root of negative x. We can think about this. When we had square root of x, the values had to be x is greater than or equal to 0. If we have square root of negative x, now you don't want to start thinking, well, that's a negative number. It can't be underneath there, so there are no values that are okay. All this means when you have negative x, you can think about it like negative 1 times x. Uh, it just means the opposite of whatever x is. right? If you have a value like 2, it's just going to be negative 2. If you have a value like negative 2, it's negative negative 2. So it's actually 2. So the values that are okay in this are the negative values and 0. You can't put positive values in there because then you'll have a negative result underneath that square root sign. If you can't see that right away, what you can do is say negative x has to be greater than or equal to 0. If you solve this by dividing both sides by negative 1, you get x and you get 0 
but you have to flip that around because you're dividing by a negative. Divide by a negative, you got to flip it around. So this one actually, x has to be less than or equal to zero. All right, let's try some more here. We're going to look at this one. We have two variables involved, and we'll think about the possible values for either variable. Let's start with the y. Because it's squared, you can actually have any possible value underneath there. Because if you have a positive number squared, this will be positive. But also if you have a negative number squared, the result will be positive. A negative number squared is a positive. And of course you can have zero. So the values of y can be any real number there. Whereas the values of x here, when you raise something to the third power, if it's a positive number, no problem. 2 to the third is a positive number. Even if you have 0 to the third, it's not a negative number. If I have, say, a negative number, like negative 2 to the third, that's negative 8, and that's not okay to have underneath that square root sign. So just the same way as above, the values of x here have to be greater than or equal to 0. But y can be any real number. This next one here. Square root of x squared plus 4, for the same reason as the y squared over here. x squared, if you're going to square the value of x, x can be any real number there because regardless of whether it's positive, negative, or 0, this is never going to be negative. So x can be any real number here as well. There are no restrictions. No restrictions on x can be any real number. But this expression looks slightly different here. x squared minus 4. We need to think about what that uh, means for this. x can be any real number here. This expression will always be a positive or 0. That expression, that x squared, will never be negative. But you're subtracting 4 from it. So we need to think about what's possible here because if you're going to square that and subtract 4, we, we need this entire thing to be greater than or equal to 0. So we can think through and say, well, we need this value to be bigger than 4. x squared has to be bigger than 4. For x squared to be bigger than 4, there's actually two possibilities here. If x squared is going to be bigger than 4, x x can be bigger than or equal to 2. If it was 2 or 3 or 4, then this is going to be bigger than this, and that's going to be that's going to be okay. Or the other thing, since we're squaring it, it could actually be a number that's negative. Uh, it can be negative 2 or negative 3 or negative 4 or, and so on. So it could actually be less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than or equal to 2. Now that's a lot of thinking we had to do to, to figure that out. It could be either one of those. If you prefer, you can write an inequality like we did before and say that x squared minus 4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And that means x squared has to be greater than or equal to 4. If you have x squared being greater than or equal to 4, that's where you need to split it into two cases and say either x has to be greater than or equal to the square root of 4 or x has to be less than or equal to whatever negative the square root of 4 is. All right. So in other words it has to be less than or equal to negative 2 or greater than or equal to 2. That's an or. It can be one or the other. All right. That's a tricky one to think about the restrictions there. All right. So that's a, a look at restrictions on variables in radical expressions.